Hello, I'm Ben Hong, Vue core team member, senior staff developer experience engineer at Netlify, and Nuxt ambassador. I created this course on Vue because Vue is one of the most popular and approachable frameworks, and it is designed to enable you to build powerful apps that easily scale. In this course, you'll get hands-on experience building projects and solving real-world problems. By the end, you should feel confident creating a Vue project from scratch, deploying it to production, and exploring the Vue ecosystem all on your own. Hope you enjoy the course, and I look forward to seeing what you build with Vue. We have a message here. Now, what if we wanted to, sh let's say, show or hide it uh, based on whether or not the message is even or not? Well, something that Vue is also known for is are their directives. And so for those who have come from Angular, this might look a little bit familiar. So the way that it works is that we basically would have a normal HTML element. So let's say, let's wrap this in a P element. And then this one, we're going to say even. And this one, we're going to say odd. OK? And so the idea here being that what we'd like to do is if the message.length is even, show the even keyword. Otherwise, show the odd keyword. And so one way we can do this is we can use something called view directives. And the way it works is it's basically an attribute you add on an HTML element, and it's prefixed with v dash. So in this case, if I go v dash if equals message.length, and I'll use the modular, modular 2 equals 0 to determine that it's even, and then otherwise v else, it'll display the other thing. So if we refresh this, we'll see, ah, OK, there we go. We'll notice that it is currently odd. And so now if I delete the exclamation mark, that should bring us over to even. And so what we see here is, again, one of the things I talked about when it came to Vue is that it builds on top of what you already know. And so when most people are working with HTML and CSS, there's a lot of value in extending upon people's existing knowledge when it comes to extending APIs. And so in this regard, by basically having the convention of the v dash, and then using the like, if else statements. Again, if you know JavaScript, in fact, you don't even need to know JavaScript. People would actually understand this property. Um, oh, granted, maybe not this part. But when people are navigating the HTML, they would actually understand what's going on here, rather than if you had kind of big if else blocks that have a bunch of functions in it, which again, I think sometimes we find is a little bit tricky with, uh, I think, like sort of React components. Those can be harder to follow, um, especially if you don't have as much experience with JavaScript. But this here keeps a visually a semantic, concise way of telling people what's going on. Now, the other, um, the other directive that I want to talk about is this one. Um, but before we do that, here's a slide to talk about this. And this is from a while ago from Sansa Cohn. And it, what it says here is that 99.7% of software development in one requirement. A user should be able to view a list of items. And I still think that's incredibly relevant today, right? That's what we're doing half the time. We're taking a bunch of data, rendering out a list. And I don't know about you all, but when I was doing this in React originally, I realized there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I know that there's more of a best practice now, but that can be confusing for users, especially if they have a function that runs the map, or maybe in this case, they use the for loop. There's a lot of kind of, kind of deciding what to do. And so let's go ahead and show how rendering a list works in Vue. So in this case, I'm just going to do a list of numbers here just to keep it easy. And so one, two, three, four, five. And we have an array here. And then what we're going to do here is we're just going to do an un, uh, unordered list. And then what are we trying to repeat, right? We're trying to repeat the list item. So what we're going to have is, if you might want to guess, is that we have the v4 directive, right? Using the for loop concept from JavaScript. And what are we looping for? For every number in list of numbers, we're going to go ahead and just put the number. That's it. And if you refresh, there you go. Done. Your list is rendered. It's fantastic. Um, and so what's really nice about this, once again, is that we are trying to extend upon people's base knowledge of JavaScript without getting too much in the weeds. Again, the syntax is written in a way that's approachable for people to sort of like in plain English, really. For number in list of numbers, print number. Great, I understand what that means, even if I don't know JavaScript. The other fun fact about the declarative rendering of the curly braces here is that it's not meant to just print out variables. It actually does evaluate JavaScript statements in there. So if in the case of, let's say we wanted to like 
be really excited about, about the fact that it's even, we can actually do two uppercase in here and run it. And then you'll see that it'll actually transform the text. It'll basically run the JavaScript inside of it immediately. Now, refresh, one, two, you can see, boom, it's updated. And so from a mental model perspective, you're like, yeah, that makes sense, cool. And so this is actually a common paradigm in a lot of frameworks when it comes to watching reactive dependencies. That's what it's called. But Vue uh, has a better way for us to do this, uh, especially when it comes to modifying existing data. Because if you think about what we're doing here, what we're doing is we're saying, based on a reactive data property, run a specific computation. And then, but if we think about that from a performance perspective, we really only wanted to do that when all the dependent, like the right dependencies are triggered. And so one of the problems that comes with doing something as like explicitly watching values is sometimes, especially when apps get really large, the watch can end up getting triggered like a lot, like unnecessarily so. And so when you hear things about people accidentally triggering re-renders, that's, that's what they're talking about. It's because at that point, you're, you're manually watching the dependencies. And if you don't know what you're doing or not caching it correctly, all of a sudden, you might be triggering re-rendering of thousands of nodes and whatnot. So Vue, in its Vue fashion, came up with an API that would help to abstract that away. And the way it does that is through the idea of computed properties. And so the way computed properties worked is, is basically another option on your app. So I'm going to add it um, below data, because, and you'll see shortly why. So computed properties is, think of it as basically performance-optimized calculations on reactive data that you have. So in the instance of, for example, the counter title, right? Rather than it be like, OK, well, I'm going to have a watch on this count. If it's 20, then add the thing. Instead, you could be, I'll say, uh, display title, for example. And so this will be a function that Vue will basically, um, it will correctly decide when to run it. So we'll see shortly. And in this function, what are we going to do? We're going to say, if uh, this dot count is greater than 20, return counter standard. Otherwise, return, oh wait, in this case, it was counter very long. Otherwise, return counter standard, just like that. And so if we switch this over now to do, 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 display title and refresh, you see nothing changes. And then it's swapped, and then it's good. And basically, even though you might think programmatically this looks very similar to what we just did, this is extremely powerful because what you've just done is now given Vue the job of figuring out when its dependencies have changed. And so to show you what I mean by that, we could even combine computed properties together. So for example, let's say that we actually wanted to impact the increment amount based on the length of the title. Let's just do that. So we could then say, uh, let's see. Let's say I call it optimize increment amount. And for whatever reason, we have some algorithm that's dependent on this, the counter title. What we could do is that we can return this dot counter title, or sorry, this dot display title dot length times, and then let's say this dot increment amount. So now we have two dependencies. We're depending on this display title here. We're de dependent on increment amount here. But then once we update here to optimize increment amount, we can see now that things are starting to change actually pretty drastically, right? You're seeing that the, oh, actually, I, I realized you're not actually seeing the optimize amount. So let's show that real quick. Uh, where's my increment count? OK, here we go. Then we can say optimize increment amount. Very good. Uh, so you can see here it's 224 right here. And so it's changing because why? Because we're mo we've modified the title. If we modify this times 10, you see that now it's updating correctly by the increment amount, but the optimized amount is now dependent on two different things. And so what you get with computer properties is basically really efficient tool chaining on reactive dependencies. And this is a concept we're starting to see popularized. I think Svelte has something very similar as well now, in that if you think about an enterprise level app, there is going to be so much that's changing. And when you have manual definitions of what you're watching, oftentimes you'll find that it's, it's actually fairly brittle because one small change will break that entire dependency chain. Whereas here, you can have your source of truth being this data store, and then you can have all your computations run off of that thing. 
right? And it knows when to trigger, it knows what to do, it knows how to cache it so that in the HTML it doesn't randomly trigger, like all that stuff that like, like our goal is to build cool things and to abstract business logic, deliver value to customers. As much as it's fun to learn about performance optimizations, that's not something we want to be debugging constantly. And so computer properties are incredibly powerful for this. In fact, like if I were to say my single most like favorite feature of Vue, it's the computer property. Because it just takes away all the worry for me about what's happening, and it does so much work for me. Again, really easy. So inside of our main.js app, we'll see that we don't have a router right now. So let's go ahead and fix that. Import create router from. I usually prefer when I have the autocomplete, but I'm fairly confident in this one. Great, yep, it's right. So what we can do now is your const app is your create app. And then to make it more declarative, we'll do app.use a router, uh, which I need to define in a second, and then app.mount. Whoops, not a board controller. And then we can just define our router this way to create router. We need to pass some options to it. So the history on this is going to be create web has history. And again, the reason we're doing this is because uh, it does require some server configurations in order to get it to work on the uh, normal HTML5 mode. And so again, I'll leave it to you and the docs, uh, depending on how you're deploying it, to do that. But generally speaking, what you're doing is you want it to redirect always to index.html. And again, plenty of docs to support probably wherever you're deploying it to. In the meantime, web has history is what we're going to use, because that is the most universal one in terms of like ensuring that things don't break. And that is a function that we need to run. And then we need to be able to define the routes. And so just to do this slightly differently so you can actually see what's actually going on here, uh, we can actually just define the routes in here as well. I just I separate them out into a file normally to make it a little bit easier for management. But again, for, to sort of help seal the mental model a little bit more, we're going to do it this way. So inside of the components, we can see what kind of pages do we already have. Well, we already got three actually aptly named pages. So let's go ahead and create that folder for views. And let's just move them over. Uh, yep, OK, what does Volar want to do? Oh, it knows I want to change it. Great, please do that for me. I'm going to move that as well. I'm going to trust it to do its thing. Great. It's nice for us to be explicit about where the file path is, but anyone who's worked on a large app before will know that when it comes to moving files, that can be a bit of a pain when you're moving up directories, down directories. And isn't there an easier way to do this? That it always refers to the root directory. So that way, no matter where you, as long as you're not doing a ton of nested folders, it should make life a lot easier. And so the secret to this, actually, is that we actually do have that already built in. And that's the at symbol. And so when you do the at symbol, what that does is it says, please go to the source folder and then do start your file path from there. And it's a really nice alias to have. Now, I'm telling you this, and you might be like, ooh, that sounds like black magic. It's not. If we look inside of our v config, in fact, this is the default, to be honest, but I'll just stick it to say la vie, view. You'll see here that there actually is an alias being defined from v that says, hey, this is the at symbol. And what I want you to do is automatically put the file URL path to this dot slash source directory. And so what this means is you can configure it to whatever you want. It doesn't have to be at. But that does happen to be that happens to be a convention for a lot of applications. So the at symbol is there for you if you want to simplify the fact that you don't have to navigate now. Wait, what folder am I in and what's going on? Now that we have that, let's keep on going. So first thing first, what kind of routes do we have? Well, we're going to want to have a path for the home page. And so what component is that? We're going to want to do the component for home page. All right. So here we have home page, but we need to import that. So we have home page from, let's use our handy alias components slash homepage.view. And that's super convenient because I don't have to think, where am I inside of the directory? It's super, super nice. There was a comment in the audience that we moved it to views. It's not in components anymore. And that's correct. So that would break. But um, from the not having to think about what directory I'm in, that is helpful. There we go. Look, everything's showing up. OK. Then we have a path here. And let's just go ahead and copy this block real quick, just to make this a little bit easier. So we have login. And then we have user. OK, user page, great. And then we have user page, login page. And this is how most of us would probably do this part. Log, oh, login is an L. And then P or U for user page. There we go. Save. Great. And then what we can do now is go inside of our app.view for sale of view. And rather than having this all be managed now with the current page and whatnot, we can actually make this a lot simpler. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and rather than put the component here, 
we're just going to do, uh, let me delete it first to show you that everything was working. OK, great, it's gone. Now we're just going to put router view. And just like that, we have our pages. Your routes are all defined to go to home page. Yes, they are all defined to go to home page. Good catch. And we no longer need to track any of these things because this is being now managed at the router level. So in case you've seen duplicates, you should not have duplicates. So there you go. Don't need that component. In fact, we don't need any of this because all of this is doing is trying to do all the programmatic things that View Router will do for us out of the gate. So I can actually just wipe out this whole thing. And then we can no longer reference any of these things. Let's comment that out real quick. And then I think we're good as far as that goes. Now we need to actually have the ability to switch it out. So rather than use the A tags, we're going to go ahead and use our anchors. Uh, use our router link. Sorry. One, two, router link. Then we have this right here. One, two, router link. Then we no longer have to worry about the click and handling that and preventing that. So all that can be deleted. Clean that up. And then instead of the href, what we're going to do is we're going to move that and then just do two. And then to what? And then we can go ahead correctly, then go login, user, home. Once we have that, there you go. Everything works just as you would expect.